All right, so Kyle Morgan with Blue Bearing Solutions, and I'd like to just talk about the motto at Blue Bearing Solutions is uh, prepare for the known and react to the unknown. All right, so you can see on this shirt. Um, so what that means to me is, is I'm gonna never get complacent on the things that I've learned, right? So continuing, continuing to train myself. Uh, so that way I don't lose those, those skills that I've learned. And, and then if you're willing to share those in, in the knowledge transfer kind of capacity, your knowns can become a known for me. And that way we take all those knowns and continue to train on those together uh, and then react to the unknown, right? So when that happens, not if. So one of the things I'd like to talk about is there's some things that I just have naturally, you know, like to have as far as kit. And I'm gonna talk about those in this video. Just understand that there's there's mission specific, you know, context that, that may be missing about something that you carry here maybe versus somewhere else. So just keep that in mind. Um, you know, I talked about in, in the Sean Ryan show, like a ready kit bag, right? So what that would encompass is a lot of these tools and, and, and extra supplies or whatever that I need. And I just take that bag with me wherever and it, I know what's in it. So that way when the, when the, my time comes to, to react, the unknown, I just grab things and, and I know they're there, right? Because I've done it thousands of times. So a couple of those things are, you know, obviously my body armor, quality body armor, right? So I've been running a Cry Precision Jump JPC. This is the 2.0 in black multicam. Thing I like about this kit is you have all the different back panels that you can switch out and use uh, for the different missions that you, you may have. Right, and also affords the ability to, to put tools, you know, for mechanical breaching and all that behind that panel itself. And then on the front, you, you know, you, you have all these different pouches that you can use. You know, I have a, a, some trauma shares up top, a little notepad in here for my, for my poetry that I write. I have some sort of index card. It's actually a back brief for me so I don't forget things as I'm planning missions, even on the fly kind of thing. Um, and then I also tie down a handcuff key in here too just so I have, have that uh, tied down in there. The, uh, the knife you see right here is a, it's actually a Winkler knife. It's a good a quality tool that, you know, that they make out there. There's a ton of different great, great blades out there. And then the mags, you know, I, I run P-mags from Magpul just because I've used them a ton over the years and, they, and they're reliable. And then moving to my, my gun belt, I've been running sub seconds gun belt, the operator 2.0 or 3.0 now. Um, it's about time, I've had this for a little over a year. I need to go ahead and just replace it. With, uh, with a new belt, just because I've been running it really hard. But uh, it has the ability to, to do an aircraft lanyard if I need to, if I have some sort of mission that requires me to, to get onto a helo, um, you know, with this, this tie down point that's also rated, you know, it's, it's rated, the buckle is rated, the belt is rated in, in kilonewtons, right? Or, you know, rated, uh, measured in force before it actually gives and breaks. So you need to make sure you're paying attention to all that stuff. And it's, and it'll have, there's a standard that it says like this is, you know, with the gate open or in this configuration, it's rated to 22 kilonewtons or 15 or, but you, you need to make sure just like with your body armor, the plates themselves, like I run level three, they're blaze defense plates in here. They're NSGA, NSJI rated, you know, and that's the, the gold standard, you know, as far as sure. There's a ton of different plates out there that, you know, people test, they do all their, uh, you know, internal testing, but if they don't have that NSJI rating, then I won't run them because that's another layer of scrutiny and, and of durability. They have to, they have to um, you know, they have to meet that, those standards. It's the same with any life-saving you know, piece of equipment. Like if you're gonna use your belt, like I said, for any Hilo kind of lanyard ops. Uh, True North drop down. I like this one because of the, the rigidity of it. And, it. and it puts the pistol at a position that I know, given you know, my physiology, I know that I won't have to arm bar myself to get this pistol out or, or I'm down here. So the ride height is important. Um, and, and the idea is I just need to be able to clear it to where I can clear the holster this way and then to be able to get the, the gun out to the threat or, or to the target. Um, I'm running a, I believe it's a T-Rex arms um, strap down here for the leg strap. I really, really like these straps and there's other ones out there too, but they have a little bit of that rubber silicone or whatever on the inside, so it really keeps it in place, right? Um, so it's not just kind of dangling. So if you're gonna actually run one, you need to make sure it's tight. And then I like the, uh, the little bit of silicone that, that creates a little bit of friction so it doesn't, it's not moving around. There's some sort of individual first aid kit. Um, I'll, I'll put in the caption who makes this one. I'm not, I'm not sure off the top of my head. Um, moving around the, the rest of the belt, we have, uh, this is just a cheap little, I think it's 5.11, you know, 
dump pouch that I can store, you know, and and have, you know, that's not too uh, too bulky, and it kind of packs inside of itself. This is a T-Rex Arms um, 5.56 holder, magazine holder, and then the same with the these are T-Rex Arms as well, uh, pistol um, pistol holders as well. And then I have a Kimite bundle with a cable loop here, and then uh, these are Pig uh, Delta. I think they're Delta gloves. Either way, really high quality shooting gloves that are out there as far as for temperature and for, for dexterity. The pistol holsters that I use are Safari Land. Use code Cadre Morgan, save yourself 20%. No. <laughs> Sorry. But this one, a lot of people ask me, right? So I've been running the Spectre Comp quite a bit lately from SIG. It's hard to find, SIG, uh, Safari Land's holster finder is, is, there's like 16 layers to it. And it's kind of, it's even hard for me having ran it for so long. So just know that what I've found to work for the SIG Spectre Comp is the, uh, it's the 7390 or 7395, and you still have to remove the barrel plug that's on the inside of this thing. So you have to actually take it apart a bit and then take the barrel plug out, and that'll allow you to get the, the actual ALS auto locking retention that these, this level three retention that these Farland holsters provide for that Spectre Comp. The SIG itself, I'm running a you know, X300 Surefire XV, uh, so it's the Vampire Head, and then everything else is stock minus the EOTech E-Flex um, uh, red dot sight for the pistol. So really, really happy with the E-Flex thus far um, because it gives me a lot of those same angles, you know, from the, the optical window, right, 90 degree angles. And I use that to actually help frame the target in, in that window before I even get to full presentation. And it tells me it, at the other end of that with a consistent draw stroke that the sights will be there if I can build that. But it also adds adds to that uh, framing a target in an optical window. If ever, I, if ever I do drills where the I turn the dots off, or if the idea is that you get, you build your confidence, Jerry Mitchell is actually the first person that had me do this, but I did it with my rifle Yotex, I do it with my pistol red dot sights, turn them off, and you can engage certain targets at, at certain distances with, with a lot of confidence. You know, the idea is that if the glass breaks, you can still frame a target in that window with a consistent draw stroke and, and presentation. Some of the EarPro stuff I use, uh, I've been running auto engineering stuff for, for a while now. I don't, I hands down, I don't know if there's anything else better out there as far as clarity with the, the noise aspect of this. There's a whole like two coil thing they do and whatnot. So definitely a uh, big fan of, of the stuff they put out um, as far as your hearing protection. Magpul uh, iPro here. These are the Explorer XLs, I believe. And uh, they give you that same ballistic kind of um, Z871, but uh, the ballistic kind of standard to the mill, the mill spec aspect. I mean, minus the, the wraparound piece, right? They don't give you the full wraparound. So just understand the environment you're working in and, and why you're using something. I always carry a little bit of a, some, some range safety stuff as far as medical. Uh, this is actually a Fieldcraft Survival uh, little pouch that comes out of their bag. I have my actual like range safety bag here. So that's anytime I'm doing any courses, I have all the med supplies in there. And then on my individual range bag, I have enough to treat at least one without having to get into my IFAC itself. Because a lot of people don't know this, but the individual you know, aid supplies that are on you are, are meant for someone to know where they're at to treat you with your own supplies. So that way, when you get caught in a situation where you've treated multiple people and you don't have your own stuff once you become injured. The, uh, the range bag here is uh, Gritter, Gritter Sports uh, out of Texas. And uh, you know, it's a pretty awesome range bag. It's, it's got a, a bunch of different pouches and this panel comes out to where you have like a, a nice hard surface to work off of and, and all that. All right, so moving to the rifle. This is a 11 and a half inch CK Pro uh, Cobalt Kinetics. And you know, this gun I've been running it, you know, here, here recently and this gun's been really impressing me. So on the front here, we have a Helios uh, QD uh, CGS suppressors. Uh, direct threaded to this barrel. So moving back, we have the EOTech EXPS30 uh, optic on the front here, and then the G33 uh, by EOTech, the magnifier, the three by magnifier. And with the uh, Unity fast optic riser for the, for the EOTech optic, and then the flip to center, um, EOT uh, Uni Unity flip to center, you know, in conjunction with the uh, Unity fast optic riser, keeps everything in alignment all the way through. And it also, and it keeps it from it being out to the side here, which is what I ran for years. Now they have this flip to center and it's everything's lined up and it's more streamlined on your body. Moving back, we got the uh, Magpul um, CTR uh, stock and then Magpul sling. So that's that's the uh, kind of general configurations that I run on the day to day. 
Now I'm going to talk about a couple of things that I carry with some some other considerations as far as the configurations that I carry them. The uh, the truck, the truck gun. One of the things that I've been you know taking a look at here is the Sig Spear LT. This is 11 and 11 and a half inch as well with a QD, right? So the actual I want to say this is a rugged suppressor uh, thread QD setup, and then you have the the uh, the at pale here with the Surefire Scout with a with the Vampire head. Uh, with the Unity uh, tactical push pressure switch, and then uh, True North forward grip here on the bottom. Moving back, there's the EOTech ESPS 3 and TAN with that same fast optic riser by Unity. The same flip to center with the this being the G43, the new 3 by version that, that EOTech has for magnifier. And then moving back, you got the collapsible stock or the foldable stock with this. I'm waiting on the, the new stock to come out uh, or me to, to get it that actually has a little bit of the collapsible function as well. As the foldable piece, and then this is a uh, VTAC uh, sling. So that would be something that I would run in my truck, you know, and, and, and that way you can compress it down and secure it in ways and then get to it and pull it out when you need to. And then this is just another one of the pistol configs. This is a sub second belt that they've I have, I have to put together, but it's that same belt, but just in their woodland camo. And then this is a, the new woodland um, holster from Safari Land with a this is a SIG AXG Pro with a Surefire um, X300 Gunlight uh, Tan EOTech E-Flex uh, Red Dot Sight. And then obviously the AXG Pro frame. W one thing I really like about the AXG Pro frame is it allows you to add these, these pistol grips. And they're not only weighted, if you get the brass ones, they also fill kind of that open space in between my palms so my support hand can really support my firing hand on this pistol frame. That's just a few of the things that I've been uh, kind of working with and, and uh, you know, but I'm definitely open to any, any feedback you guys have and, and look forward to training together.